Hi, I'm John Dobson. This is the best way to learn the circle of fifths, to memorize the circle of fifths, and even to draw the circle of fifths. If you like this, please subscribe to my channel. Thank you. Okay, so we start by working out what notes are at the various points on the circle of fifths clock. We're talking about a clock here. So you need to visualize a clock to start with. We're gonna write it down. I'll show you how to draw it in a minute. So start with C major at the top of the clock. 12 o'clock, there are no sharps or flats. I've got my pinky on C. Even if you don't play piano, this is a really easy thing to do. If you put one finger on each key, your thumb will naturally land on the perfect fifth, which in this case is the G. So we go up five and we get to G major. Do the same thing again, put your pinky on G. Your thumb will land on D. That is two o'clock on the clock, that is two sharps, that is D major. Do the same again, put your pinky on D. Your thumb will land on A. That is three o'clock on our clock, that is three sharps, that is A major. Do it again. E major, four sharps. B major, five sharps, five o'clock on the clock. And now we're going to stop for a sec. Okay, this is a quick, quick tip on how to find perfect fifths on the piano. And this is important for what's about to happen. So when we went from C to G, we had three black keys in between and only one point where you've got two semitones. The same thing went from G to D. In between G and D, you've got three black keys. Okay, and it happens every time so far. Three black keys, one point, semitone. A to E, three black keys, one point where there's a semitone. Okay, and then E, three black keys, one point where there's a semitone between. But if you do it on B, that's not a perfect fifth, that is called a tritone, right? So we have to compensate because there's only two black keys in there or no way of putting it. There are two points where it's semitones. That means we are one semitone short. So we need to raise this F sharp, make it into a F natural, sorry, make it into an F sharp to get our perfect fifth. So we have got two F sharp. Okay. And now we are have got to six sharps. So we have finished with the sharps because any more than six sharps or flats becomes ridiculously difficult to read. So fortunately, rather than carrying on and going for C sharp, which would be the next one up, seven o'clock, seven sharps. We don't have it as seven sharps, we have it as five flats. And that's D flat major. The next one up from there is five up from there, which is A flat major, which would theoretically be eight sharps. It's eight o'clock in the circle of fifth clock, but it's four flats. E flat is nine o'clock on our circle of fifth clock, but it is three flats. So we got, we got up to B flat now. And the E flat to the B flat, I've gone right up, I'm getting to the top of the piano now. That's two flats. That's 10 o'clock. Go up a perfect fifth from there. It doesn't go to F sharp because that's too high, too big a gap. So like, like we took talking about earlier on, F is the perfect fifth from up from B flat. That is one flat, that's 11 o'clock. I can go all the way up to the top of my keyboard on this. Full size piano be able to do that. Don't worry if you haven't got a piano at hand. You just need to understand it, that's all. Finally, we've gone back to C, so we're at the top of the clock, 12 o'clock. Now, I'm not very good at art. In fact, I'm completely bobbins at it. But what we're going to do now is we're going to draw a circle of fifths. So I'm going to, I'm going to have some few, few things to help me do it. Okay. So this is a really good hat. I love this. Geometry hat, guys. Here you go. It's an all-round edu education with looping to the music. So draw a circle. And this is great because when your kids say to you, Daddy! Can you draw me a clock? You'll be able to do it. Right, so I've done that. I'll keep it on the same setting, okay? Go to the top. It's approximately top, doesn't matter, it doesn't have to be a work of art. There you go. On that point. 
the same thing again and you should get it all the way around and it will be very close to reaching where you started from it's like blue peter isn't it if the american listeners wonder what that is with you is all right there you go there you have it and these correspond to 12 2 4 6 so I didn't want to take up too much time but obviously what you do next is you fill in the order of notes as I did in my video so go back over the video and write the notes at the appropriate point in the clock but this is one thing you might have noticed and this is the clever bit this is why this is my bit I'm quite pleased about my idea right so these numbers on the right okay I have done a mirror image on the left and I've done them in red so you can see that I originally I went seven, eight, nine. You can see sort of like the rough bit underneath where the, where I did it in pencil before going over. So that's how you would work out seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, whatever, according to the keys as you do it. But then once you've done that, then write five, four, three, two, one, in reverse, um, or mirror image. Why isn't it obvious? Because it's the same as the flats for each key and that makes it so much easier to memorize the next thing you do get a pack of cards um, and I've taken out all the cards from seven up and depending on how confident you are remove to start with let's just remove or leave just the ace one and two of all the suits start with that for example and then um, pick you randomly pick the cards out and whatever card you get you say what that would be say how many sharps so example the two of clubs you would say D major two sharps um, one of hearts F mate F major one flat go for it like that add a card each time then add the freeze then add the fours. Don't use the chart, otherwise you're cheating yourself, aren't you? You're not memorising that way. Now, this is also a really good way of practising your scales randomly for people that are doing higher grades. So, I hope you enjoyed that. I hope you get the idea of it. Now I've got, a, um, going to show you the key signatures and my key signature hack. So, continuing along my high tech theme okay well <laughs> i'm going to talk about the key signatures because some is going to be going oh yes but they haven't been talking about the key signatures yet what's the point of understanding the circle of fifth unless you understand the key signatures well i'm going to mention that now so on sibelius i have done this for you all and as you can see c major no sharps or flats so in the key signature bass pep treble clef there's no sharps g major has one sharp okay and it is the f sharp so you just have to remember that and then d major has two sharps okay now when i do my pepper pig um <laughs> through the circle of this video oh, honestly trust me it's good right you it's going to become a lot clearer as to why that is a sharp why it's an f sharp why it's a c sharp we actually raise the the, the the seventh in the dominant chord of each key but never mind so so we said that's so we, now we've got f sharp and c sharp that's all you need to remember okay now you lots of people will tell these ridiculous mnemonics about how to remember the order of the sharps Forget that. This is what you do. The next one is one higher than the first one. First sharp, you just go diagonally up and it's G sharp. So logically, the next one in the next one, the even one, which is a four from two, 
will be one higher, which is D sharp. There you go, E major, D sharp. You get this dance line going up. Okay? Slightly confusing with B major because the next one up from G would be A, but you can't draw ledger lines on a key signature, so you have to put it down here. That's why it's down there. Right? So you got to five sharps. So remember I said how we're going to go backwards. We carry them around. So the five would be seven, the four would be eight o'clock, nine o'clock, ten o'clock, eleven o'clock. But now we're into the realm of the flats. So to the back to the key signature, you need to remember the B flat and you need to remember the E flat. Now we have a similar thing as we had before. The next one with E flat is one lower than one for F. So you've got two diagonal lines, but instead of going up, this time they're going down. So the next one for the A flat major will be D flat. Okay, so that's that's one way of doing it. That's one way I remember. That's what I always do. And in music theory exams, if you're in that situation where you go to do music theory exams, just remember these diagonal lines. That diagonal line, and that'll help you to do it. So, a lot of a lot of diagrams of the circles of fifth will also have a ring of natural minors on it as well. And many of you might be expecting me to add that to that circle right now. I'm not going to do that because one, because it's boring. And two, because it means that you won't quite really understand what you need to do to key signatures to make them into minors. Because you're just a, apparently learned here. Also, obviously, it makes it much harder to memorise the circle of fifths because you've got the minors to worry about as well. But here's a little tip to show you. A natural minor is at the top of your circle of fifths. It's the same as C major. It has no sharps or flats. Now let me just play you an A major scale. Now you should know from what we've done so far that that is at three o'clock on the circle of fifths. In other words, it has three sharps in it. Okay, so how do we get from A major to A minor? We have to take those three black keys down. We have to flatten them. If you sharpen a note, the opposite of sharpening a note is flattening it. So you get rid of these sharps for A major and you've got A minor. So three sharps less is A minor. Or if you like, think of it as three flats less. So simply E major would become one sharp for E minor because you're getting rid of three of them. Let's just go back a bit. So D major, to make it into a D minor, you get rid of two flats and you two sharps, sorry, and you add one flat. So that's why D minor has one flat. G minor ends up with two flats, C three flats. And that's basically how you do it. Let me just go on a bit further. F major into F minor, four flats for F minor, B flat into B flat minor, five flats, six flats, seven flat, 